Net metering may be dead, but solar is not. For many of us in the industry, it kind of came as a shock that the California Public Utilities Commission voted to proceed with the changes to net energy metering for the major utility providers, Southern California Edison, San Diego Gas and Electric, and Pacific Gas and Electric. I'm sure if you're watching this, you've been told by a solar representative or you've seen marketing that you have to go solar now or before April 15th of 2023. While this is true to some degree, don't be pressured into jumping into bed with someone because they're screaming, it's the end of days, because it's not. But you probably should consider going solar before this cutoff date, and I'm going to explain why in this video. But before I dive into the details with you regarding these changes, please be sure to take a second and subscribe to our channel by clicking that big red button down below. We really appreciate the support, and if you find this video helpful after watching it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family so they know about these changes and how they may or may not be affected by them. Of course, if you're someone that lives in our area of Southern California and you're interested in going solar, then be sure to visit us online to request your hassle-free quote. Yep, there's a link right down in the description below. And we really do make the process of switching to clean, renewable energy easy because we do everything in-house. All right, so first thing first, if you or someone you know already has solar and you've already received permission to operate, then these changes will not likely affect you. NEM 1.0 and NEM 2.0 customers are grandfathered for 20 years under their respected program. So unless you're coming up on your 20 year anniversary, you should be good until that date. Additionally, if you're planning to add on to your existing solar system, you may or may not be affected depending on how large of a solar system you are adding on. Now, per the NEM handbook, a system add-on cannot be greater than one kilowatt or 10% of the original system size, whichever is lesser. This basically means you don't have to submit a new NEM application if you're just adding, say, two or three more solar panels to your existing system. And that would mean you're not affected. The next thing is when does this take effect? And it's April 15th of 2023. The CPUC was very clear that they would provide 120 days for solar companies, lenders, and homeowners after the vote passed on December 15th to get their NEM 2.0 application submitted before that April 15th date to be grandfathered under the current NEM 2.0 program for 20 years. Now, there's some important things to pay attention here. The CPUC specifically said submit applications before April 15th, not install by April 15th. So if people are saying it has to be installed, that's not true. The CPUC was very clear that you do not need to have your solar installed before this date, nor do you actually have to have permission to operate from the utility provider. But the California Public Utilities Commission did say that you need to have your NEM application deemed valid before the cutoff date of April 15th and have the system installed and inspected by the local authority of jurisdiction, so the people that sign off on your permit, within three years of that validation date to be grandfathered in under the NEM 2.0 program that's currently available. I think this is a very important thing to know because while the cutoff date is April 15th, the utilities typically take three to five business days to deem a solar only NEM application valid. This is also where most solar companies tend to struggle and you hear a lot of bad reviews from homeowners due to their NEM applications not being done correctly and taking over six months to a year to complete and receive permission to operate. This is something you want to be very conscious of when you're speaking to an outside sales rep or a solar broker, because we're seeing a lot more of these solar brokers these days. As these individuals have absolutely no control over your NEM application or the internal operations of the company they're selling your project to for service and installation. 
I feel a red flag that the solar company you're going with doesn't know that they're doing the NEM application properly is when they actually have you sign a blank NEM application when you're signing your solar contract. Completely meaningless and worthless to do. You have to understand the NEM applications are generated through the utility provider's online portal that we as solar contractors actually have access to. We have to input all the data online to get a valid NEM application that can then be signed by you. Typically, we send this electronically via DocuSign or some other online form. The utility providers are very picky about their applications being done a specific way. And if you get a rejection due to errors, well, that delays you getting a valid status. Yeah, you need that valid status. It's critical right now. For us, we rarely experience issues when submitting an NEM application. And this is primarily due to us having a fantastic project coordinator who is very in tune with the NEM process. They know what documents are required and how to get your application submitted properly to obtain a valid status because they know how to read the electrical plans and how the system actually works. There are a lot of people in positions at various solar companies that have absolutely no background or experience in solar or construction for that matter. And that's fine if they're getting trained, but sadly many of them don't get any formal training and they really struggle to understand what the utility is looking for due to complex terminology to providing proper plan set pages. It's, it's not just saying, hey, I'm going solar. There's a bit more to it. You kind of need to have that eye of an engineer to be able to handle these applications. Now, the last thing I want to touch on is how net billing will affect customers after April 15th that do not get a valid NEM2 application status, as well as how this is going to kill the solar industry in California. The first thing I want to clear up is the new net billing program will not kill solar in California. We will likely see a reduction in solar projects. I, I believe in that. That's going to be throughout the state, but I don't believe it'll be anywhere near as drastic as it was, say, in Arizona or some of the other states that implemented net billing. And there are a couple reasons why, but the biggest one is the cost of energy in California. California has ridiculously high electricity costs compared to those other states that implemented net billing. Arizona, it's like nine cents a kilowatt hour. With SCE customers, so Cal Edison, your average is around 38 cents a kilowatt hour. And SDG&E customers, well, they're currently averaging close to 50 cents per kilowatt hour. Another thing to remember is California banning the sale of new gas-powered cars in 2035. That's not too far away. This means you will have to buy an all-electric or plug-in hybrid, whether you like it or not. For those of you that don't know, I'm sure you don't realize this, electric cars use a lot of freaking power and will add a significant amount to your home's electric bill. Is it cheaper than purchasing gasoline or diesel? Sure, but it's still going to cost you. And solar is going to be cheaper than buying it from the utility company. So regardless if you're on NEM 2.0 or net billing, solar's still cheaper at the end of the day. I know firsthand from working with so many great customers that their utility bill doubled after purchasing just a single electric vehicle for commuting to and from work. So solar is not dead in California. It's just going to be different than what it's been for the last 15 years. With the biggest change being that you have to buy a battery with your solar system. There's just really no other way to put it. You're going to have a larger upfront investment now. Now, I was hoping our software team would have the new modeling done for net billing so I could show you the savings that you could expect with a solar plus storage battery backup system compared to a solar only system under the new net billing and a solar only system under the current NEM 2.0 program. But they probably won't have that ready until mid-January, so be sure to subscribe to the channel, click that little bell icon down below, so that way you can get a notification of that video when I publish it, because I do think it's gonna be valuable information so you can see the delta. Now, in summary, 
Solar is not dead in California because the cost of energy is increasing and our demand is too. You can save more under NEM 2.0, no questions there, because you have a lower cost of purchase without batteries. You should ask questions when you're getting your quotes from various solar companies about their NEM process and turnaround times for those applications, not just their installation practices. Your solar system does not have to be installed before April 15th, but you do have to have a valid NEM status before then. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to request your hassle-free quote from us by using the link down in the description below. We make the process of going solar easy by really doing everything in-house, from plan design to installation. We're there for you. Be sure to share this video if you found it helpful with your friends and family too, so they can be informed of these new changes in the solar industry going on in California. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.